I've been living with this like burden for three years since 2016 when they started changing everything and you know and and to have that burden lifted off of my soul is I've never felt happier or you know more more at peace with myself than I have like right now. The, the police didn't announce themselves. I decided that I'm just not going to talk to them. So why are the police outside your home in San Francisco? And so what I did is I put out a dead man switch. People are like, well, you're brave. It's like when I'm coming and, and explaining what Google was doing, this is an act of atonement, okay, to make my conscience clear. They're not an objective piece. They're not an objective source of information. They are a highly biased political machine um, that is bent on never letting somebody like Donald Trump come to power again. The Google whistleblower has come out of the shadows, this time releasing a large cache of remarkable confidential Google documents that expose Google's political bias and a scary progressive social agenda. My name is Zach Voorhees, and I was an employee at Google for eight years. And the reason why I collected these documents was because I saw something dark and nefarious going on with the company. I felt that our entire election system was going to be compromised forever uh, by this company that told the American public that it was not going to do any evil. And I saw that they were making really quick moves, not only in the documents, but also in the internal speeches that the executives were giving to the company, that they were intending to do that. They were intending to sculpt the information landscape so that they could create their own version of what was objectively true. It was June 24th. Project Veritas released an investigation that included an interview in the shadows with Google insider Zach Voorhees. Within days, it seems, Google was on to him. What happened since you and I last spoke? Uh, there's a lot of stuff that happened since you and I last spoke. Um, I went back to San Francisco and I laid low. And uh, then out of the blue, I got a letter from Google um, indicating that they knew what I had done. And that letter contained uh, several demands six of them in fact, uh, asking me uh, whether I retained documents, asking me to list the people that I had given the documents to, and uh, requesting access to all of the data, all of, my, uh, all of my personal data, my laptop, my backup hard drives, in order for them to come in and start scrubbing all of it. So we have the letter in front of us, and I have a copy of it here. This letter does make a few demands. It asks you to cease and desist. It asks you to comply by a certain date, no later than Friday, July 26th. Did you? Uh, I did. I did comply. And I complied honestly. What okay. did you do? Uh, what I told Google is that, yes, I had retained some of their files. And um, I told them that, yes, I had sent it out. And I told them truthfully that I had um, sent their files to law enforcement. Uh, what law enforcement agency did you send it to? The law enforcement agency that I sent it to was the Department of Justice Antitrust Division under Attorney General William Barr. But according to Zach, Google's attacks on him had only just begun. A Twitter troll outed him as the leaker, saying, By the way, Zach, shouldn't you remove well-employed tech geek from your bio, Mr. Leaker? Hmm. So who do you think one snowflake is? Well, I had my suspicions that it might be uh, an insider from Google since that information that he posted wasn't public. After I realized that Google knew who I was, um, I started going to uh, lawyers and attorneys and trying to figure out like um, what Google's likely next step was going to be. And uh, both attorneys that I talked to both said, this is the first step in having your life ruined. They're going to come after you. And so I realized that this is what was coming to me. So what I want to let them know is, you know, um, you know, look, I've, yeah, I've got your data. Yeah. And so what I did is I put out a dead man switch. 
so that in case they were going to either try to destroy my life through the legal system or that they were trying to just, you know, off me because, you know, I'm exposing their a really big thing, how they are tampering with elections. Um, I wanted to let them know that, hey, look, if something were to happen with me, then these documents are going to be released immediately. And what is a dead man switch for those who aren't familiar with that? So a dead man switch is something that people that have um, information about a corporation or somebody else, uh, and they're concerned about their personal safety and possibly their life. And what they do is that they let that entity know that in the case that they get offed, that uh, the information will be released to the public. Mm -hmm. And so I set up a dead man switch to trigger in the case that I was killed or assassinated. And so um, I let them know that I was willing to do that um, and uh, to protect myself. The next day, uh, the police uh, began looking for me in two different locations. So Google decided to do a wellness check. And from what I've understood from other uh, attorneys is that they're trying to establish that I've got uh, some sort of mental problem in order to make their case easier. And this is a, a, a large way in which they intimidate uh, their employees that go rogue on the company. San Francisco police confirmed to Project Veritas that they did indeed receive a quote, mental health call, unquote, and responded to Zach's address on that day. Are you worried about your safety? I was because, you know, I, because the documents hadn't been released yet, the value of taking me off the chessboard was really high. Um, and the expense of, you know, taking me down, in which I wasn't well known, um, was very low. Uh, if nobody knows who somebody is, then if they take them off, then it's a conspiracy theory that the real reason was because of some nefarious cause. And so what I realized is that I needed to both increase the expense that Google would take to, to, to do something bad and also reduce the value of that successful operation. And so I decided that the best way to reduce the return on investment was to um, come public, release all the documents and get the target off of my back. And so that's what I did and that's why I'm here today. Now this is a, a confidential document, correct? Yes. This is not a document that Google has come out and admitted uh, that this is their process. That's right? correct. Um, and in this, in this document, it says, I'm gonna read from it. In fact, in fact, if you brought this up without the document, they would say that this is a conspiracy theory. Wow. The internal Google documents from the story given to us by Mr. Voorhees reverberated through the halls of Congress. In this Project Veritas video, which I did watch last night, uh, they allege that there are internal Google documents, which they put on the video, and this is what it said. For example, imagine that a Google image query for CEOs shows predominantly men. Even if it were a factually accurate representation of the world, it would be algorithmic unfairness. In, in some, some cases, cases, it may be appropriate to take no action if the system accurately affects current reality, while in other cases, it may be desirable to consider how we might help society reach a more fair and equitable state via product intervention. What does that mean, Mr. Slater? What do they mean by that? So what they want to do is they want to act as gatekeepers between the user and the content that they're trying to access. So this information about algorithmic fairness was given to Project Veritas by you. That's correct. How did you obtain this document? So these documents were available to every single employee within the company that was full-time. And so as a full-time employee at the company, I just searched for some keywords and these documents started to pop up. And so once I started finding one document, I started finding keywords for other documents and I would enter that in and continue this cycle until I had a treasure trove, an archive of documents that clearly spelled out the system, what they were intending to do in very clear language. So what you're saying is the public's right to know this information is, has a far greater value than whatever they can do to you personally as a result of you sitting and going on camera talking about it. That's right. I mean, if I'm just on camera, that's just some dude's opinion. And you know, 
who knows what that person's thinking. When they see the documents themselves, they're going to be shocked, they're going to be terrified, and they're going to be like, how can Google so blatantly lie to the American public and lie to Congress when there is, um, when there is a pile of evidence showing that what they're saying is untrue? Here is another one of the documents that you leaked to us. This is, well, tell us what this is. Okay, so this is a blacklist, one of many blacklists that, that are at Google. This particular blacklist is showing which uh, uh, news sites aren't going to show up underneath the search bar when people are searching on their Android phones. And what they're doing is that they're saying, okay, well, you know, Newsbusters, The Gateway Pundit, National Enquirer, Media Matters, Infowars, uh, Info they're not going to appear you know, on their search results. Um, and they're telling people that, oh, they don't, they don't have any blacklist. This is all done. You know, they don't have any political ideology. They don't have any political bias. But it's really clear that they do. And you know, if Google wants to have political bias and they want to say that they've got political bias, you know, that is their right as a company. But for them to go under oath and say that these blacklists don't exist, while well, employees like me are able to just search through the internal search engine of the company and see that they do is, 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 is hypocritical at the least. And it's, um, it's perjury at the worst. Yeah, a lot of people ask us, what's the solution to this problem? Seems like what you're saying is the solution is to be honest about what it is that you're doing at the very least. Uh, do you think there are any solutions beyond that? Um, I think that you know Google needs to, to they've got a fiduciary responsibility to their, to their stockholders to, to inform them of what the business is doing because they've invested into the company. And I'm a stockholder myself. Well, Congress um, holds Google exempt, says they're just a platform. They're not interested in meddling in content or having an editorial position on anything. What do you say to that? Google is playing both sides of the game. On one hand, they're saying that they are a platform and that they are immune from being sued for the content that they host on their website. On the other hand, they're acting as a publisher in which they're determining the editorial agenda of these certain companies and they're applying that. And if people don't fall in line with their editorial agenda, then, they're, then they're, they're, their news articles get de-boosted and de-ranked. And if people do um, fall in line with their editorial agenda, it gets boosted and pushed to the top. Um, you're one of a few people who have come to Project Veritas from the inside. You are someone who very recently worked for Google. In fact, you were speaking to us while you were an employee. Um, should others at Google come forward like you did? Uh, yes, and the thing is, is that you know, for the for the people that are inside of Google right now, there's a lot of them that see what's going on, and they're and they're really scared. Um, and they see what's going on, they're like, "What the heck? Like, this wasn't the company that they signed up for." And a lot of them probably you know probably feel guilty, like I did. Like I felt incredibly guilty working for this company. You decided to come forward. There are people within Google who are maybe on the fence about coming forward. And as you said, they are afraid of what might happen to them or something else. What is your message to those people on the fence? I'm hoping that those that want to do something are going to be compelled to act and that we together can come together and defend ourselves in the case of litigation. A lot of people are gonna be fascinated by you as a person, you as a human, willing to do this. I, I, I harp on it because it's quite extraordinary to people. We get asked these questions the most. What compels someone to, to sit in that seat in uh, our offices and, and um, to, to go public like you have done? I mean, some say that you're a hero. Some are gonna say that you have extreme moral courage. Some might say you're kamikaze or you're uh, uh, ignorant of what might happen to you. What do you say to them? Here's what I say to them. You know, um, I always thought that when the time came f to do the right thing in a big way that I would always be the one that stood up and did the right thing. And I got tested because I was making a lot of money 
um, at Google. My yearly income from Google was $260,000, okay? Once you factored in the stock, wow. okay? And so I had every incentive in the world to stay at the company and just click the paycheck. And I know that that's the decision most other people would make, which is to, just to collect the paycheck. But I could never live with myself knowing that if Google was able to implement the plans that they were planning, that I, at the moment of choice, backed out because I was selfish. And I didn't want to have that on my conscience. And I felt guilty and you know, people are like, well, you're brave, it's like, the feeling that I participated in what they were doing was actually worse. I feel that when I'm coming and, and explaining what Google was doing, this is an act of atonement, okay, to make my conscience clear. And if I didn't do this, then I'd have to live with myself for the rest of my life. Hmm. And people aren't gonna understand what I'm talking about until they see the documents, because it's really that bad you know, they can stop like one or two of us, but they can't stop all of us coming out and explaining to the American public that this is what's happening, that Google is not who they say they are. I've been living with this like burden for three years, since 2016 when they started changing everything and, you know, and, and to have that burden lifted off of my soul is, I've never felt happier or you know, more, more at peace with myself than I have like right now. How did you come to find Project Veritas? How did you come to find us in your journey to go public? So the reason why I came to Project Veritas to do this disclosure is um, once I knew what Google was doing and I had um, an amount of documents to, to prove um, my thesis, I started to ask my network about who I could trust to you know, get this out. And uh, Project Veritas came up over and over and over again as they were the only journalist you know, outlet with enough integrity to be able to put this out to the American public. And what other people told me is don't go to the establishment players. Don't Why not? Because the New York Times and the Washington Post stab people in the back. They've long given up their investigative mandate. And they're not, you know, the, the legitimate news is coming from the ground up. And they're at this point just picking it, you know. Right. But the, the real news is made by outlets like Project Veritas that does real investigative journalism and has, you know, ethics and morality and, and wants to see America thrive. I don't think a lot of these other news organizations actually want to see America thrive. I think they want to see it fall, you know? And so, you know, I knew that I could trust you and, and, and honestly, you, the reason why Project Veritas has so much credibility is because of you, James, because you have the moral fortitude to stand behind this. And so I realized that I could put my back to you. And so that's what I'm doing and you haven't let me down. And I appreciate everything that you've done for me and all the whistleblowers that have come forward to expose corruption. This year, insiders approached Project Veritas and told their stories, exposing the giants in Silicon Valley. Thanks to the bravery and courage these insiders are showing, big tech is being held accountable. This is a watershed moment. It's not the New York Times or CBS News doing the work. It's individual citizens, anonymous, heroes who put their careers on the line and they've struck a nerve and found their voice at Project Veritas. People always ask me, what can I do? You can follow the lead of Eric Cochran and the Google Insider. You too can be brave, wear a camera, and contact us securely at projectveritas.com brave.